What's the goal of this shared learning collaborative? Our goal is to work with states, districts, and providers in the field to enable personalized learning at scale for K-12 students. Now how, how, you mentioned personalized learning at scale, how does that work? I mean, what's involved in that process? So if you think about a teacher in front of a classroom, especially kind of at a high school level, standing in front of 30 students at a time through six or seven instructional periods during the day, mm -hmm. think about what it would take for that student for that teacher to really think about what do my students need next to succeed? What have they done in the past? Where are they kind of on their learning progressions? What is it that we want to achieve together kind of in this unit of study, in this course of study? Think about kind of all of the things the teacher would want to know to make sure that that next experience with the student is as successful as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and think about trying to do that with like hundreds of students a day. Right. Um, and you get both kind of the that energy and excitement around what personalized learning could be and why it's so difficult. What's the state of student data these days? So student data, folks talk about personalized learning and data-driven instruction. For us, they're, they're synonyms. Folks have some different ideas, but for, for us, they're, they're synonyms. So when you think about data-driven instruction and data-driven instructional decision-making, um, what we've heard from teachers is that data actually is in lots and lots of different systems in mm -hmm. their everyday lives. And so they want to use um, assessment data and portfolio data, different kinds of representations of what kids have been able to demonstrate that they know and are able to do, but they all live in different products. And so we've heard from teachers kind of over and over again that if they're just at that first step thinking about what experience have my students have out, had already, they're logging into four or five or six different websites. You're no. It's that many? It really is. Wow. So it's just a series of silos, right? And if you actually wanted to get the holistic view they'd have to log into each one of those and bring all that together? Either they have to log in and bring them all together or their district has to do really expensive point-to-point -point data integration projects to bring all the I data see. into one place. Okay, okay. So last question for you, and it's kind of broadening the scope of this a little bit. Let's say that that data can be unlocked and organized. Yeah. Right? What is that going to do for students and for teachers? So that is exactly what we're focused on. Um, building a set of technology services that securely offer that kind of syncing and transfer um, ability across the tools that teachers already use. Um, that if it's possible to offer really that kind of one-stop shop in whatever tools work best for teachers, um, can our services kind of be at play there to help the data be unlocked from all of the silos and be presented in a meaningful way to teachers. Teachers still get to, to decide what tools work best for them along with their districts to uh, be implementing great um, tools that are available out in the field. But what it really could mean is that we think back on that teacher and her couple of hundred students in that day, that first question about what do they need next actually becomes solvable. And it becomes solvable at scale. This software is good at this. Right. It really We need to make sure the software is well organized and the data can be securely transferred so that that really important decision can be made in the classroom between teachers and students and families. Right. Well, thank you for being with us. Appreciate you taking the time. Of course. It's my pleasure. Thank you.